I haven't seen you in a while. Respect. How's it going? It's going splendidly. Still preaching. Have you joined the Holy Faith yet? I've always believed in Jesus Christ. When has that ever changed? The Holy Faith. I didn't say a, a, a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness have come to me and say, I've always believed in Jehovah, Jesus Christ. I have to know the content of that belief. Well, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe he, 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 he rose again on the third day. I believe that he's from the tribe of Judah. I believe um, first Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. The generations of Jesus Christ. The son of Abraham, the son of David. The end. You, do you believe in the church Jesus established? In Antioch. No, the church, Jesus said in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 18, about Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church. Now that church, that church he said he's going to build. Do you belong to that church? To the congregation, I do. I belong to the congregation. So it's actually the original translation is not the church, it's congregation. Ecclesia. That's what it is. Just means church. Congregation. Because the children of Israel were never ever referred to as the church. They were always referred to as either the children of Israel. No, it's ecclesia in the Greek, in the Old Test Greek Old Testament. The Quahal, I think it is. In Kahal. Hebrew. Kahal. In Hebrew. Yeah. Congregation. Use the congregations. You belong to the congregation that Jesus established. Yes, I believe in my heart that I do. So if we go back 2,000 years and there's the apostles, are you going to follow what they say? Well, if you believe in Jesus, then, and once you've accepted him and you've repented, mm -hmm. then a natural progression from that is to be a partaker of his divine nature, which is um, Second Matthew, Second Peter, chapter one. Yeah, but that's different. For you see, to know what it means to be a partaker in the divine nature means you have to have the right doctrine. But you can't understand what that means otherwise. Well, I do. So, uh, now, now you say you do, but every Tom, Dick or Harry says he does. That's the problem we've got, isn't it? 20,000 or more different kinds of Christians. No, but there's a difference between having an understanding and actually being a partaker. So I said, the natural progression, I said I have an understanding, but I said the natural progression after you've accepted Jesus Christ and you're living a life of repentance, mm. the pro to progress, the natural progression which is the next step, is to be a partaker of divine nature. I didn't say that I am, because only Jesus Christ can establish you in that divine nature. As a human yeah, being, yeah, the of course. thing that at the minute, the only yeah, But you're not divine, divine, are you? You're not divine. Look, right. Jesus Christ. That's yeah, so the when you... The divine nature of Jesus Christ. Yeah, so if, you, if as Peter says, partake in the divine nature, what does partaking mean? It means, literally, exactly what's written in 2 Peter chapter 2 Peter from the beginning to the end it gives you literally what what the deeds are which is diligence add to diligence faith unto faith virtue unto virtue and the list goes on temperance. so basically having the right moral attitudes gets you partaking in the divine beyond, nature it's beyond morality but you give me diligence da, 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 da. that's beyond right. morality that. The way that I see the Bible, when it... The way that you see it. No, 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 you can't do that, you see. What yeah, we got to do is go beyond way. opinion. Yeah, I'm saying you have right said, doctrine. I if you just I, say it's your opinion... I said I have an understanding. Wouldn't that be an opinion? An understanding and an opinion. Yes, but you've got to know that your understanding or your opinion is a correct one. No, okay, this is so, the problem. So, so, what you're saying is, I'm paraphrasing, for me to know it has to align with the European Church Fathers, which is what you're trying to say. Well, that's a starting point. And I After don't, all, and I, and I don't oppose Saint Augustine, from Saint Augustine all the way through to who would you say the last one in Europe was? Well, the last, the last church father. Um, no, don't, no, nobody from modern times. I'm talking about from Saint Augustine in the Middle East, in the Middle Ages all the way through to King James. Who would you say the last European? I mean, I think I think the last church father maybe Saint John of Damascus, but I'm not certain. Um, European. Well, they are Europeans, aren't they? Well, they, they kind me, of not me, West European, the East European, and, me, and South for European. Me, for 
Africans. And North African as well. Well, obviously, Saint Augustine is from Carthage. Yeah, but he's not African. He's, you know, he's. Right. He's, we, we must understand what we mean by African these days. You know, there's North okay. Africans and Arabs, aren't they? No, no, no. And then there's so, all this who were before the Arabs so came. During, during, Berbers and so on. During that period, Africa was only North. Sure, yeah, yeah, it wasn't talking about anything subtropical. Only when the Western Europeans came to West Africa and the rest of Africa, mm. they brought that term, which was already, already being used in the North, mm. to refer to the people that lived in the North because they were conquered by the Roman general, General Africa. So he only conquered Carthage, Egypt, just that region, which was literally Saint Augustine is from Carthage. Okay. But well, you see, what I'm getting at, you said European church fathers. I mean, it's not that they're European that matters, it's that they are the church fathers. No, but in our modern era, from the Middle Ages till now, your belief, I, I think, as a Christian, your belief has to align with those, those um, European church fathers outside of the Bible, in my opinion. If your belief goes against whatever St. Augustine has established all the way through to Martin Luther, I believe you're bordering. I, I, I'll consider you a heretic. You consider me a heretic? No, no. Whoever goes against whatever they've established. That's not, you know, no, you haven't, you haven't quite got Catholicism correctly there. No, no, but. It isn't that we, it course. isn't. Well, what that, well, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about why I believe what you believe, because it doesn't matter what a bunch of other people believe. Um, you no, see, but I'm talking about outside of Ireland. If your okay. belief goes against what they've established, I, I'll say you're borderline. No, no not, not for us, because for us, you see, um, the Church Fathers are a guidepost. So after all, all if you go against the key teachings of the, of the Fathers, then you're even, in big trouble. Even, so, even for you example, if you, if, deny, if you deny that you, you should go to Mass and receive from a priest, Holy Communion, then you go against all the Church Fathers. And that Holy Communion is the body and blood of Christ. You. you believe in that? I agree. No, yeah. The, the European Church Fathers, if you go against that, I believe that you are going against the actual Bible. Yeah, but anybody who's a Christian must believe that. Well, I don't, that's what I said, I don't oppose that. So you believe it? So you believe okay. you must go to Mass, to a priest, receive Holy Communion, which is the body and blood of Christ. You believe that? Okay. So how the Protestants separated that from the Catholic Church? The Protestants are nutters. Forget them. No, but you can't say that. Because they rejected 1,500 years of established tradition. Of course, they're nutters. No, they're just no, they, self-serving. They, they, they took whatever tradition was there that the Catholic Church had already. Yeah. And then they affirmed it by applying the right biblical scripture to it. All oh, right, inventing the idea of justification by faith alone. Inventing the idea that you're say your soul authority, the Bible alone. Then where was that in the church fathers? Grace. Where's everything, that in the church everything, fathers? Everything that they aligned and took from the Catholic Church and aligned biblically. Yeah. They came back out scripturally. So hold on, just going back to the point. You, are you saying you believe that a Christian must go to mass, receive Holy Communion from a priest, which is the body and blood of Christ? Now Jesus says, if you don't receive, eat, eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot have life in you. Yeah, that's a fair point. It's not a fair point, it's Jesus' point. That's a fair point. So you just say about Jesus, when he says something emphatic, you say it's a fair but point. Everything that Jesus said in the Gospels, he said it under the law of Moses, because he lived under the law of Moses. Are you saying he's God or not? Son of God. Not God? As, as it is written in the, so, he's my God, yeah. Is I, he I God? Do, is he God? Is he Almighty God? No, Adonai is Almighty God. I see. So you distinguish between Adonai, which is the Father, the Father, and Jesus, Yeshua, which is the Son. So they're, they're two different gods. Because you said Jesus they're, is God. They're, they're, they're two different persons. Oh, yeah, share, but you said you said Jesus is your God, my God, and then I said, is he Almighty God? And you say, no, that Adonai is Almighty God. Yeah, so you've got great. God, your God, Jesus. An almighty God. No, You've got two Jesus, gods. My God Jesus is the son of God. Yeah, but there's two gods for you. I just listened to what you said. Jesus is God, but he's not, the, he's not Adonai. So you got two gods. Obviously, the clues in the name. One is called Jesus Christ, the other one is called Adonai. So that's clearly identifying two different people. Are you saying you believe in two gods? No, I don't believe in two gods. So you believe in one God? Adonai. But not Jesus as God? Son of 
So is the son of Adonai God so, or something different? So so when, when 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 Jesus said to me, Who do men say I am? And some say you're John the Baptist, others say one of the prophets from old. And what did Peter say? Go on, you tell me. No, what did Peter say? I'm listening to you. And I have a little dialogue about what they said in the Bible. You tell me what you want to say. Peter said, You are the son of. And then Jesus Christ turned around and said, Flesh did not reveal that to me. So, in that instance, was Jesus talking about two gods? Nope. So whatever Jesus, whatever statement Jesus yeah. and Peter were trying to declare in that moment, yeah. it's the same thing I'm trying to declare to you right now. Here you need, you need this is why you need Catholic doctrine. Well, this that's is why you need because you. I tried to get you to explain to me how you can. You're not believing in two gods, and you've not come up with anything for me. You just then told me what Peter said. I didn't answer my question. How are you not believing in two gods? If you're saying Jesus is God, but he's not, he's not Adonai. How would you make it? How do you come to a belief in one God as opposed to two gods? Okay, so, for, for, so okay, so the word God, yeah, in English, just means a supreme being, right? The last, not the last, but in the book of Matthew, Jesus Christ said, "All authority has been given to me over heaven and on earth." Right. Mm. So in this earth, Jesus Christ is the supreme being over this earth. Now the word God means the supreme being. What do you have to say about that? So you say Jesus isn't the supreme being? Has Jesus been given authority over heaven and earth? Best not to ask a question with a question. Well, uh, I'm asking you, do you th are you saying Jesus is not the supreme being then? Over this earth he is, yeah. Over heaven and earth. Hold on a minute. Is there something he's not supreme over? No, he's supreme over everything. Right. The Father has given everything. Okay. So before he was given everything then, was there a time when he wasn't the supreme being? Oh, no. Before it, no, there wasn't before. Because Jesus okay. Christ always was, is, and will always be. Okay. So, whilst he was with the Father, yeah. he willingly gave up his authority okay. to come into this world right. and suffer okay. as human beings. Okay, so then, he is Almighty God then? I am the Father of God. Did he say that? Are you saying yes, he is Almighty God? Son of God. You won't, you're not willing to say he's Almighty God, are you? He's my God. Because, because my book doesn't say... That means, well, you'll no, say Adonai is no, no, Almighty book, God, yeah? My, my book doesn't say that Jesus Christ said I am God. My book doesn't say that. Okay. My book He's, clearly states yeah. that Adonai, Hebrews 5, chapter 5. Yeah. No, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5. Yeah. Adonai stood back and said, Thy throne, O God, is forever. Okay. So do I, do, I, do, I, do I say that Jesus is the ultimate God? No, I don't need to because Adonai, the God of gods, the Lord of lords, has already declared that Jesus Christ is God. Hmm. So what authority do I have to work against that? Okay, it's because you're not willing to say that he's almighty God. That's why, because, that's because, all because, I'm... Because my book doesn't say that. I can only okay. tell you what's written in my book. Okay, so... So what, I don't have the authority No, you do, to because say. God, the very definition of God is that he's almighty God. Supreme. Yeah, so if you're saying Jesus is God... Jesus is supreme, yeah. If you're saying Jesus is God, then by definition he's almighty God. If you don't say that, you're a polytheist. Because there'd be Jesus the God, and then there'd be another God who's different from him, a different kind of God. Because the Almighty, the, the Almighty One, and then there's just the God. I know what you're trying to talk about. I'm trying to get not, precision a, from I'm you. I'm not a Trinitarian, so that's the start. Okay, so you're a, a what? Unitarian. I believe that Jesus, whatever is written, written in the book, I'm a Bible-believing follower of Jesus. Christ. Problem is, there is no there are all those Trinitarians who would say they're same as well. They're Bible believers. So that's why it's no point in just saying I'm a Bible believer. We have to examine what one believes. Oh, that's fine. And so, I'm all for it. so you're not a Unitarian, you're not a Trinitarian. Yeah, I'm, I'm with exactly what, whatever right. is written in the Bible, right. how it's written. Okay. I don't so, go against it. Right. And I don't, I don't, right. for you to ask me, is Jesus God? I'll have to support that with scripture. I can't support that with scripture. All right. 
The so, only thing that can support yeah. the scripture yeah. is the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So when someone asks a question like I did, um, like there's Almighty God who you call Adonai, right? But you don't call Jesus Almighty God, but he's God. So you've got Almighty God, then you've got God. This, that's two distinct persons. categories. Yeah, persons then, okay. Two distinct entities. Persons. Okay. They're one entity. Okay, okay then. Two distinct persons. You said they're one entity. Where did it say that in your Bible? First John 5, 7. Go on. They are one entity. First John. If I turn to First John 5, 7, it will say they are one entity. Will it? It will say that these three are one. One what? One family? Well, it, it does say these three are one, and then it goes on. I mean, you can read it. One team? You can read it if you want, but it just says that there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word. You're not using the King James, which has got that addition from, from um, the Middle Ages, are you? That's, that's Actually, really, I am using King James. That's out of all, the, all Bible since. It's just pointless to refer to that as a support when it wasn't even known in the earliest manuscripts. Never, never mind the earliest. I mean, way back up to like the early Middle Ages, unknown. But that's according to your... <laughs> so biblical scholarship is Protestant as well as Catholic. That's, that's according to you. you. No, no. All biblical scholars, Protestant and Catholic. That's according to you. To them and me. Because right? To them and why, me. The reason why I say that is because the King James Bible is all predicated on every single manuscript that came before it. And here's, here's how I can prove that. So, before John Knox and Calvin went, before John Knox fled from um, Britain because Queen Mary was chasing him, the Catholic, Queen Mary. This is irrelevant. No, it is because I'm trying to make a point as to why the King James. I would rather take the King James over all the, all the, all the, all the, all the, um, all the good Protestant Bible all the Bibles that came up. The reason why. So before John Knox and Calvin, all of them got together and put together the Geneva Bible. Before that, there was no such thing as Bible verses. Yes, there was. No, there wasn't. Stephen Langton was Archbishop of Canterbury, appointed by the Pope. And he was the one who gave the, um, he gave the, he started off the divisions of the chapters. Um, but, not but then you get verses coming later. John Knox. John Knox, are you sure? I won't, Geneva, I won't, I won't go against Geneva, you right now. But I wasn't sure it was John Knox. The Geneva Bible. Okay. The Geneva Bible. But what is the point of this? There's the nobody who cares. No, no, the point was you have to care because we're. Are you because really? I'm trying to, are you going to be here for a while? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm coming back. Maybe. We'll see. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to. Sosa. Who? The Sosa. Father the Sosa, the head of the Jesuits. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Ah! Way. That coffee with him. All right. Right. It's not like Bishop Barron, but it was still really cool. <laughs> yeah, so, so the point I'm trying to make is, is that. Why should the, you believe the, in the, the King James? The, the, the King James Bible took every single thing that came before it, yeah. and then it sort of just. All it did was just put together what made sense from everything that came before it. And, and before you say that's just the King James Bible. It was agreed to by both the Catholics and the Protestants because that was the whole point and the whole aim. So we agreed to the Geneva Bible? Well, you were all in the same room. When was this? In Geneva? Us? No, no, not the Geneva, it's the King James. We were in the room with the Protestants agreeing the King James Bible? Everybody was in that room. Really? What room was that and when was this exactly? We were, we were criminalised. It was a, a seven-year period. This, the Catholics this, were criminalised. Right, this is all good so fun. Why did, why did the Catholics try to blow, uh, uh, blow up King James before he became king in England? You're really going off the point now. No, I'm not. I'm what not on earth has Guy Fawkes Day got to do with the Bible? Well, if Guy Fawkes would have succeeded, there would have, there would have never been no King James Bible. Yeah, yeah. But no, th that, that's no. hardly a way of telling us why no, all Protestant Guy scholars Guy, Guy have Fawkes. rejected the idea that you put 1 John 5, 7, which is interpolated in the, about the because, 9th century because, into the Bible and because, leave it there, as because, you guys who are King James fanatics because, do. Because I'm not a King James fanatic. You are, because you keep leaving it in there, some of the, all your own scholars say it shouldn't be there. But you keep saying, um, 
keep saying. Uh, what would you say? No Protestant Bible scholar, except those who are really fixated on the King James Version, will accept that 1 John 5, 7, that was interpolated in the 9th century, should be there. But there are quite a few other certain Bible verses that the Jews don't even agree to their interpretation. Well, I'm not even going to talk about other Bible verses, it's just that one that you alighted on for your evidence, for your belief. And I'm saying to you, come back to it. Why? When you said that the Father and the Son are one entity, that was your phrase, where is that in the Bible? No, no, that was... That we are one exactly, entity. That was, that was my phrase, but I was, yeah. and, and before I said any of that, I said, when I, when I, wherever I interpret or wherever my opinion is, I can back up with scripture. But well, I didn't that's... say that was written exactly how it was. Okay, back it up, well, they are one entity. No, no, but I did, that's it, First John 1, 5. Yeah, but I'm not taking a 9th century interpolation as evidence. Well, yeah, well, After all, like just okay. you. I could talk to a thousand Protestants, they'd all disagree with you on that. So it's okay. pointless. Okay. I want to agree with, I want to go along with what you say, listen to what you say. But if it's just your idiosyncratic view, I can't really pay much attention to that. So with all due respect, well, well, after all, well, you're the well, only one who'd advance that. Well, well... Um, it's in, it's, it's not, injected it's, to support the Trinity, that's why right, it's there. If it's, if it's not... If it's not... I mean, this whole conversation can only ever be based on my... Um, my, uh, but surely you're not going to hang on to a, 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 a what is clearly not in the early or even later uh, late so, antiquity so I manuscripts. Used, I used, I used um, the word entity, uh, the dictionary definition is one that has a realm and independent existence. Even if I allowed you this, uh, so, this false so verse, it no, still no, wouldn't no, say no, that it doesn't. So the word entity that I used. Yeah. Yeah, but you're saying the same entity. I don't not object to the term yeah, entity. So, I'm so, saying so you've got to show that they are the same entity from scripture. And you say you kept going back to you will not drop this. Alright, fine. Let's give it to you. Show me that it show me that it says they're the same entity. These three are one, right? These three are one what? Family? One team? One group? No, no, no. One what? Before it gets to these three are one. Yeah states that there are three that bear record in heaven. Yeah. Father. Yeah. Where? Yeah. And these three are one. One what? One family. Alright, so should I read the, the first after that? I don't know whether it'll help at all. Well, why, why, why? So I... Why am I doing this? No, no, why no, am why, I... Why? What, what's the point? Here's the point. So, your your, yeah. your reason why um, what I call your religion, which is Protestantism broadly speaking, has failed singularly in 500 years and has spawned vast numbers of people with different views like yours is, would be rejected by these characters who are regulars. Their views would be rejected by you. No, the reason it's like you, they would you they, you're not a Trinitarian. They, they're Trinitarians. Exactly. So you said you reject Trinitarianism. I said I don't reject it. You reject Trinitarianism, you said that to me before. I said I'm not a Trinitarian. But what is the difference between saying I'm not a Trinitarian and I reject Trinitarianism? Th there is a difference. Oh boy, man, what is this? This is worse. This is worse. Now you hair split. I've always said uh, I don't reject it. I just said I'm not a Trinitarian. So why don't you accept it? If you, if you reject you don't reject it, are you accepting it? You see? I can't explain something like that. How can I accept something? So you're neutral as about Trinitarianism? I can't explain it. You don't reject it. You don't accept it. So you're neutral with respect to it. Is that it? I can't explain it. That's not my question. You've said you don't well, reject well, it your, your and you said you don't accept it. You're in between. You're on the fence. Is that right? I'm not on the fence or anything. The, uh, the if you I'm don't sure, reject and you don't accept, what are you on? The, I am on the Bible. Whatever is written on the Bible is what I'm on. 